everybody? How are you doing this morning? Hopefully we're, we're awake. I think I see eyeballs. Not too much drinking last night, right? Um, so my name is Robin Mankey Cassidy, and I'm with our networking and security group here at Citrix. And my colleague with me today is? My name is Darshan Pagat. Uh, I'm responsible for the application security portfolio as part of the Citrix ADC, you know, formerly known as Netscaler product line. And we're really excited to talk to you today about some um, changes um, and new things that are coming up with our um, application um, security um, for workspace hybrid cloud. Um, so first of all, you've probably seen this. If you feel like tweeting, please help yourself. Um, if you could do app security, SYN uh, 115, um, you know, and Citrix Synergy, that would be awesome. Um, so what we're going to go over today is where um, app um, security delivery transformation is happening. Um, I hate using the word transformation because I think it's overused today. Um, and then some one of our existing solutions that we have in place and some new security solutions that we're bringing online here quite shortly. So first of all, let's talk about the threats that are out there. So this is um, from the National Institute of Standards and Technology. 92% of the vulnerabilities that are out there have nothing to do with your network. It has everything to do with the applications and how people are accessing them and the threats and the vectors around that. That's a huge number. Um, so as you're thinking about how you're deploying your applications, this is a key component that you need to be thinking about. Um, and applications are changing, as you guys probably know. If it hasn't hit your organization yet, it will be in the near future. Um, everything is moving towards APIs. So how applications are going to communicate to each other, how it gets to resources, those types of things are moving towards using APIs almost exclusively. So as you can see from the statistics here, um, organizations um, have already experienced um, application breaches. I'm not sure there's anyone in the world that hasn't or hasn't discovered that they already are. And many people are not really confident with how they're doing their security protection today on their applications. Um, you know, there's a lot of different um, point solutions that people put in place but they don't communicate together. You can't get a full picture of what's really going on. So it makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, organizations um, feel that web apps um, are their highest security risks. And they are. If you think about the applications that you're putting in place today, most of them are either web-based or SaaS-based. Um, so it's, it's not also um, how you manage your, the application security, but you know, there was a session that I did yesterday. It's also how your users connect to those. And organizations, 26% um, are doing little to nothing for their application security. They put it in place, they put a, a load balancer in front of it, and, and they just go to business. They're not actually thinking about the full security components that, that need to be put in place. So I've talked a little bit about this already, but our traditional applications in our data center um, on-prem have changed. How many people, one, um, are using cloud-hosted um, data center services or you've moved a bunch of your resources to cloud already? Or thinking about it? That's almost everybody in the room, okay. Um, so this is the future, right? Um, there are industries that will never, um, or you know, in late stages, move their stuff out. Um, but this is the reality of our world. And as we move to the cloud, there are new vectors that you need to take into consideration um, when you put your applications out there. For example, um, cloud native applications using microservices and containers. Um, there's a whole new world there that you need to consider. How the communication happens between them, how that security, how are you making sure that security um, is in place to make sure that the right applications are making the right API calls and you're not accepting calls from somebody you shouldn't be connecting from. So um, I forgot, I wanted to ask one other question. How many people in the room are in um, kind of networking, load balancing, that side of the house? 
Okay. And how many of you do workspace and application development? Okay, good. Excellent. Thank you. So I'm going to turn it over to Darshant. Thank you. So, you know, as we think about kind of a hybrid multi-cloud, we, you know, typically talk about how some of the applications are on-prem, some are really moving towards <coughs> SaaS, and others are still web apps that are internally deployed either on-prem, in a hosted data center, or even the cloud, right? Public cloud, infrastructure as a service, or even platform as a service components. And so as that proliferation of deployment models happens, and then of course, like Robin mentioned, the app architectures are changing themselves from traditional to microservices. The complexity in how to manage you know, security and risk across these deployment models significantly rises. And, and you've heard about that on the networking level, but really if you look at the latest you know, hacks or data breaches that are happening, they are all almost always at the application layer. So somebody had you know, the, the, the largest one, which was I think the Equifax hack, happened because somebody did not patch their server in the back end with an Apache Struts vulnerability. So this is pretty common, right? It's, Either you are missing some of the components, they don't, they're not patched to the latest and greatest, they have a vulnerability that is exposed, uh, or somebody's you know, uh, bad actors, either state or non-state actors, are trying to get through and you know, either do password spraying, so it's called credential stuffing or password spraying attacks through bots. They might be trying to get access to data using things like SQL injection and others on your web applications or they're just trying to do a denial of service attack on your application itself. So there are multiple types of uh, you know, attacks that happen, either you know, using bots, using <clears throat> you know, trying to do unauthorized access, and then lastly, as more and more of these apps are moving towards an API-centric world, you know, API by definition is really kind of in some ways machine-to-machine -machine, uh, you know, um, communication, and so in those environments, how do you make sure that those APIs are secure? And in each of these scenarios, whether you have a web app deployed as facing to your customers, right, outside, public facing, or you have a web app that's deployed in the workspace environment, like we saw a great demo of intelligent workspace yesterday with a lot of different webs, virtualized, SaaS, and internal developed web apps, they all are published in the workspace. And so as long as you have even an internal app that is published in a workspace, you want to make sure that in, you know, in this era of malware and ransomware, you want to make sure that your internal facing apps, employee facing apps are also secured. So when we think about those challenges, let's kind of walk through how Citrix ADC and all of the security functions can help. And so this is just you know, uh, a series of things that we've kind of listed here, all the different tool sets, all the different feature sets that are available today in helping you protect your public facing or internal web apps and APIs. So starting with you know, layer three, layer four, right, you want to make sure that you have DDoS protection, right? There are, and there are multiple layers of DDoS protection, but on Citrix ADC, we have a robust you know, set of DDoS protection uh, you know, uh, features, more than 35 of them overall, including flood attacks, reflection attacks, a lot of different things, right? Um, we also have a built-in ICSS certified layer three and layer four firewall. So we have had ACLs for a while, and these are now certified to be used as a firewall internally. So not as a perimeter firewall, but typically, if you want to segment your network for you know, specific applications, specific compliance requirements, and layer three, layer four network segmentation is good enough, you can use layer three, layer four firewall in, in Citrix ADC. Uh, of course, we have a you know, series of authentication options, multi-factor authentication. So you know, we do single sign-on. So that's, again, making sure from an authentication authorization standpoint, we have a gamut of integrations and a gamut of different feature sets there. 
Uh, and then we'll dig deeper into you know, the, the rest of the four things uh, in, in the next set of uh, slides. Okay. One thing I want to kind of also mention is on the you know, SSL TLS uh, layer, so be going beyond layer three, layer four to SSL and TLS, we have a set of, you know, we are known for best price performance in the market, but not just that, we have a set of robust feature sets. We also support TLS 1.3. We were the first ADC in the market to support the latest TLS 1.3 spec as a, as a beta as well as, as GA. So, you know, our, our technical experts, architects are part of that working group. So we are always on the forefront in terms of what we do with SSL. And by the way, we have optimized and refined our SSL stack. It's not the same open SSL stack. So, you know, over the last few years, you've seen a lot of vulnerabilities come on SSL. Hey, SSL v2 is not good enough. Now move to TLS 1.1, 1.2. In each of those scenarios, because we had refined our thing, uh, you know, SSL stack much better, we didn't have the exact same ones. We had some, but that uh, you know, certainly were much better than what other uh, vendors had to go through. Okay. Um, as part of Citrix ADC uh, Premium, we also have, you know, we've had this web application firewall for, for a while now, right? We have more than 3,000 customers worldwide who are actively using Citrix WAF to protect against application layer attacks or meet compliance requirements like PCI. I mean, if you have PCI requirement, you absolutely need to deploy a WAF. And if you have Citrix ADC, especially as a premium license, you already own it, right? You already have the capability to do it. And more and more, what I'm finding is, even for internal apps, security operations teams are requiring that you deploy a web application firewall. And so if you have Netscalers, uh, Citrix ADCs, you have a full-featured, fully functional web application firewall. We release signatures for it every one to two weeks on all the new CVs that we find. Uh, it has all the classic OS top 10 you know, protections. Uh, but again, this is you know, easy to use, easy to start off. Uh, we have learning uh, as well for you know, application behavior learning. And based on that, we can do a lot of the checks and relaxations. So overall, it's a fully functional, a fully featured uh, web application firewall. Okay. Not just that, uh, as part of Citrix ADC Premium, what we just announced yesterday is pretty soon we'll have what we call bot management. Now, how many of you kind of understand what is the problem with bots? Anybody? Okay, so if you, if you think about kind of the internet traffic, more than 35% of traffic today on the internet is automation bots, okay? If you put up a website, and, I, and we did this, uh, you know, we did a small exper thought experiment our on our own website. Uh, we have an engineering tool, and we put it, uh, you know, as it's a SaaS-based tool, we put our app web application firewall in front of it. Within a day, we counted more than 10 attempts to scrape the website or get into the website by bots that were based out of Alaska, University of Michigan, China, a lot of different places. So it's not just geo-based, it could be anywhere. But these are infected machines, IoT devices, that you know, bot net owners are using to go and just scrape websites or just go and ping websites and do the different things. They're trying to find the door that they can get through. On, so anytime you register a new domain, within the next few days, your website has been scanned and you know, people have been poking around already. So this is a pretty common problem. The other thing that people do is they buy pa username passwords on the dark web, they take the whole list and try it against the well-known websites because most people reuse the username and passwords. So this is a pretty common problem as well, right? And that's done through bots. Um, there are business uh, issues with bots, things like they'll try to scrape your website or your public facing you know, uh, property. They'll try to scrape your content, scrape prices. They try even to hold inventory. So there was a very interesting case where one of the airlines in Asia uh, was having a hard time selling tickets. And they didn't know what was going on. 
Their prices were great, their everything was perfect. What they found out when they you know, did more investigations was that there were automated scripts that were holding on to the inventory. So their inventory would never actually hit the market. The automated scripts will keep on holding it. So when you, if, if you've gone to Ticketmaster, you know, they'll say, well, we'll hold your seat for 10 minutes and then you have to buy, right? That's the exact same thing was happening with the airline. And that was in some ways a denial of service attack on the airline because then they were, you know, they were able, not able to sell their inventory. So things like those happen as well in terms of what bots can do. So this is a big, big issue out there today and, and growing faster. So what we announced yesterday is as part of Citrix ADC, we will have support for bot protection and bot management. Um, that will be coming soon, right? And so it will help you defend against you know, a lot of these standard bots, standard toolkits, uh, identify based on behavior of the device in the browser, whether this is a real user, human user, or this is an automation. And then based on you know, a lot of other uh, specifications, we can say, is this a good automation or is this bad? And there could be good automation like Google web crawler. You want to be indexed for search, right? So, so there are good bots, bad bots, and we'll be able to support on, on both uh, of, of those things as well. Okay. Any questions so far? Yeah, so, so great, great point. I mean, you need to think about this. It's, it's, they're not just malicious necessarily, but they could be competitors. They're out looking to see what your lowest prices are so they can go lower than you. So it, it's not just to stop your business. It could be to affect your business in other ways. So bots, um, yeah, yeah. It, it's the, the up and coming thing, right? right. A absolutely. Uh, and then the side effect of bots is you know, we, we talked about how 35% plus of traffic coming to a website is typically bots automation, which means you have infrastructure in the back end to support these bots. You've invested mm -hmm. in compute, storage, all the other things, database, to support traffic that is not really helpful to you in running the business. So when you put on bot protection in front as a Citrix ADC you know, on the load balancer itself, now you're also helping optimize your infrastructure in the back end. So there is also a cost benefit. It's not just about security, but there's also a cost benefit. And then there's a business benefit where you have data privacy, you don't have you know, other competitors scraping things or doing denial of service attacks on, on your inventories. So really, really a very new upcoming uh, attack vector that is plaguing almost every public facing website. And not just that, if you have an internal web app, that you've posted on uh, you know, your workspace, then somebody could come in with a malware and that same web app can be attacked in the exact same manner as well. So the, the scale of your protections differ when you have a public-facing, consumer-facing property versus when you have an employee-facing property. But I think the risks remain the same, almost the same. Mm -hmm. right? And so you need to put you know, all your security checks and balances whether it's internal employee-facing website, web app, or a customer-facing web app. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the, the other thing that's, you know, we talked about API. So Citrix ADC can be used to protect your APIs as well. We have all the classic functions that a typical API protection uh, you know, so solution needs. Uh, things like protection from DDoS, protection from bots that we talked about, but also things like enforcing authentication, making sure that only the right partners or the right you know, uh, consumers, tenants, are calling your APIs. Ability to rate limit who can call you how many times, make sure that you are meeting that SLA. Uh, you know, ability to refine and get insights into what, how are your APIs performing, right? Because you need to meet certain SLAs. All of these things can be done using Citrix ADC. Right? You can enforce rate limit, you can do authentication, you can even route those APIs to the right service point. So for example, let's say you have two or three different tiers of service for your partners, and you want to route them appropriately to the right service level. You can use Citrix ADC and API protection and you know, content-based routing policies to do that. Or if you want to deploy you know, a 
temporary uh, or next version of an API, API version one versus version two, you can do the exact same thing with Citrix ADC as well. So lots of you know, robust feature sets that you can leverage for your websites as well as your APIs. Uh, and then with 13.0 that we just released, as part of Citrix ADC Premium, we also have what we call forward proxy included as part of that ADC Premium license. And what this means is you can now use Citrix ADC as an outgoing uh, SSL interception point. So whether your APIs and servers are calling out or your users are going out, you can enforce whitelist, blacklist, URL filtering, you know, all of those kind of things, uh, and make sure that your users, all your APIs, are not calling command and control servers, not going to Tor proxies, right? You can enforce that, and again, that's part of Citrix ADC Premium as well, with an added URL filtering database license that's a subscription per year. Uh, but again, this is all, you know, adding more and more functionality into Citrix ADC Premium and making it really a, a solution that you can use. It's, it's a multi kind of, you know, uh, it's, it's a tool chest, right? You have multiple tools to, uh, to have and help you against a lot of different attack vectors uh, within the Citrix ADC piece as well. So Darshant, I, I know everyone's probably thinking this in the back of the head because I know I am. So if I'm turning on these additional security capabilities, what is it doing to my ADC traffic-wise, speed-wise? Is it going to slow it all down? If I turned every single one of these on? Great, great, great question. So the short answer is, of course, there is performance impact, right? Mm -hmm. When you turn on more functions, of course, there's going to be performance impact. We have a very detailed sizing guide, both on our forward proxy as well as on our web application firewall piece. So, you know, you can rest assured when you are trying to enable uh, the feature, you will get to understand what that might impact in terms of performance, right? Or do you need a, a higher license? Do you need a separate deployment? Whatever that might be, you know, our sales teams can work with you closely on, on getting that done. Now, my other question is, um, so, you know, we've got so many form factors. You know, we've got physical boxes, we've got virtual, we've got bare metal now, we've got containers. Are these capabilities across all of the platforms or are we limiting it to certain ones? Sure, uh, so all of these capabilities that we have talked about so far, they're available on all the hardware platforms and all the software form factors, including you know, what we call you know, MPX, SDX, VPX, which is a virtualized form factor, we just introduced and announced uh, you know, in the keynote, if you've heard, is the bare metal BLX form factor, which means it runs as a Linux process on any of your you know, Linux servers. It could be a UCS chassis for all that we care. Uh, each of these form factors has the exact same functionality. And so you don't have to worry about whether you're deploying it in Azure, in AWS, or your private data center. No matter where, what you're doing and where you're deploying it with, you have the same functionality centrally managed central analytics uh, that, that will come to with ADM soon. And, and Rackspace is now transitioning over to ADC. Uh, so if you're hosting your data, data center at all on Rackspace, this capability will be coming to you soon. Okay. So in terms of, uh, can you go back one slide, please? <laughs> Thank you. I told you it's hard. <laughs> yeah. So, so we briefly mentioned about you know, what, what does API protection mean? And so this is available. You know, it has been available in Citrix ADC for a while now. If you're interested more in learning more about this capability, you know, reach out to us. We have a white paper that we can share with you on how to use Citrix ADC as an API protection device as well. Next slide. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. And then what we just announced yesterday, again, is uh, you know, we're st it'll be coming soon, is the ability to do API protection as well as security functions in a Kubernetes microservices environment, right? So how many of you have teams that are in some ways working on microservices, app development? Couple, yeah. Just one, C couple maybe, yep. yeah. So if you have teams that are working towards developing apps in microservices environment, almost all of them by default are going to turn to Kubernetes. So in the Kubernetes environment, 
you can use Citrix ADC as a gateway or ingress control, we, we call it the ingress device in Kubernetes environment, that will help you route and do all the things that you need to do uh, before traffic enters the Kubernetes cluster. So it gives you the visibility, it gives you the security, it helps you enforce things like SSL TLS ciphers, right? It helps you route to the right services. So all of those things are available today as part of the ingress device. It could be either a containerized form factor or it could be your existing net, uh, you know, Citrix ADC net scalers. We have uh, work, you know, capabilities to work with both. And then what we just announced in addition is coming soon is the ability to do API protection in a Kubernetes environment. So when you have services and APIs exposed out of your Kubernetes cluster, out of your microservices, to the rest of the data center or the world, you can enforce a lot of the API protection mechanism that we just talked about. So you can enforce authentication, you can make it seamless for developers to use those templates. And so, you know, one of the key things about Kubernetes is that you don't, DevOps or ops doesn't want to get in the way. And with the templates and with the, you know, solution that we have, DevOps does not have to get in the way. All they have to do is define a template and the developers can run with it, right, for, for each of the APIs that they want to expose. So um, that's, that's something that we announced yesterday. It'll be available soon uh, between this quarter and next. Any questions? Okay. And, and last but not the least, uh, we also have, over the last year, introduced functions in Netscaler, Citrix ADC, uh, which allows you to do SSL offloading. And there are two forms of this, right? And so this is important. A lot of our customers in the reverse proxy, so in the classic load balancer concept, uh, they stopped using IPS in front of their apps because everything was encrypted. And so it takes a lot of money, a lot of scale to run IPS on each of the things that are coming in encrypted because now you have to decrypt and encrypt again and again. Same thing with antivirus, same thing with DLP. So what we have capability now in Netscaler, ADC Premium, is you can now decrypt the SSL traffic, send it to either an IPS or a next-gen firewall, or an AV, or a DLP, whichever one you choose, and you know, it can be multiple of those, so that we can do service chaining of all the security functions and then send it back encrypted. And, and the benefit of all this is that you now can actually get visibility that you had lost previously because the traffic was encrypted. But more importantly, you can do it cost effectively. You don't have to scale your other security functions and buy bigger boxes and buy more expensive IPSs. You can use the IPS you had before, you got to the whole encrypted traffic problem. So this works both in the reverse proxy, so you know, users going to your app, and this also works you can deploy Citrix ADC in a forward proxy mode where users going out can also go through this and we can decrypt, send all of your traffic to IPS and, and other security devices. And this is really called something like an SSL visibility appliance. So you can use Citrix ADC also as an SSL visibility appliance. So this is something that has come over the last year and the latest release, uh, which, which happened I think earlier this month, it also includes things, uh, capability to copy traffic. We call it port mirroring. So you can decrypt traffic, mirror it to your IDS. You can mirror that HTTP traffic to your Gigamon or some recording device that you might need for compliance. And that way, you, know, you don't have to, again, buy bigger boxes. You can just leverage your existing investments. Okay. So that's, that's something that's available, again, as part of the Citrix ADC Premium. So all the security functions we talked about so far, right? In, when you get to ADC Premium, which either you have an SDX, by default you have it, or you know, you, you, on, on the other versions you buy a premium license and, and pooled is a great way to buy uh, you know, subscriptions and, and make sure that you, are, you have the flexibility. Uh, all these security functions starting from web application firewall, API protection, uh, what we call content inspection with TLS termination and scale, uh, as well as um, 
you know, we talked about API protection already. So all of these functions are part of that premium license, and, and you have it uh, available as a consolidation play uh, on, on Citrix ADCs. So whether it's on-prem in your data center or all of these functions work the same way in Azure and AWS too. So we have a lot of customers who are making that journey from on-prem to you know, public cloud, and they are using you know, Citrix ADC as a way to have that consistent deployment model and visibility across these clouds. So in order to support that, we have something called Citrix uh, you know, ADM, Application Delivery Manager. So this is a centralized controller, single pane of glass, that allows you to manage all your different instances, all of your different deployments, on-prem or in the cloud, consistently, right? So it's inventory management, it's uh, you know, configuration deployment using Stylebooks, which is easy to use Stylebooks. But not just that, it's also a lot of analytics and insights. So one of the, you know, I'll just give you two examples, but ADM gives you insights on performance and security both. It can give you insights on web transactions. It can give you insights on, of course, your you know, uh, workspace deployments as well with, with ICA and HDX insight. But I wanted to highlight two things that are related to securities more specifically. One is the whole SSL dashboard. So this dashboard is a great tool to help with auditing and meeting compliance. With this dashboard, you know exactly what ciphers, what kind of encryption technologies, key lengths are being used in your network. What certificates are coming up for you know, expiration? What certificate do you need to focus on? All these things are made easy with a simple to use dashboard, and it's, it's a one place to go. And when you have auditing requirements, you can just show this dashboard and say, look at this, we, we have it, right? Or we, we are meeting the compliance or encryption standards. And then from a web application firewall standpoint, we have an application security dashboard that gives you a whole you know, view on what kind of attacks are coming in, how big is the attack, how many of those attacks are being uh, you know, viewed, which apps are under attacks most, most where the clients are coming from, um, and then where they are, so, so which clients and where they are coming from. So this really gives you a very quick view on all the things that are happening with your apps and who's being attacked or who are they attacking, you know, which apps are being attacked. And then of course you can drill down and get detailed logging into each and every incident uh, using ADM uh, and say, okay, you know, this, this uh, SQL injection, I'm getting it from this particular client, let me look into it more. Right, so all of those capabilities are there behind in the, in the ADM as well. Okay. So any, any questions on you know, the solutions, the problem? No questions? Clear as mud? <laughs> okay, so in, in summary, right, uh, Citrix ADC, is, is really a kind of a tool chest for you. We have tons and tons of security features that you can use to secure your applications, whether they are deployed in front of, you know, in, in public facing, customer facing, or employee facing environments. And it really is a stack starting from layer three, layer four, with DDoS and layer three, layer four firewalling, to web application firewall, you know, SSL uh, encryption standards, and then what the two new things that we just announced yesterday with bot management, which is in a, you know, becoming a more and more problem, uh, and how you secure your API from an API protection and security standpoint. Okay. So Darshan, That's, if I'm just starting to look at this, um, I see all of these different security um, components that we now have in the ADC, and I wanted to start going down this path. I'm not gonna turn them all on at once, right? Is there, do we have a recommendation for, you know, what's most important? What would you look at next? How would you go? And not every app's gonna necessarily need the same protections, right? Absolutely. So I think, you know, from a security hygiene standpoint, of course, making sure that you have the right, you know, layer three, layer four firewalling and DDoS protection, SSL encryption, as well as authentication. Is that it's like kind baseline of, that's fundamental? That's the baseline that almost everybody has to do. The next step from there is to turn on web application firewall, right? Especially for things, basic things like SQL injection, 
you know, enable the signature checks because we now have signatures coming every week, every two weeks. And that's the most basic thing you can do as a security hygiene for your web applications, right? Or, or even APIs. Because trust me, SQL injection is the most common form of attack coming in. The second most common form is cross-site scripting, right? And then these are the things that you can very easily protect against. The third one is buffer overflow, which means when you have forms, people will try to send in a lot more data than you think you need and cause buffer overflow, cause your backend application to you know, crash and expose data that you were not supposed to. So those are the two or three things that kind of almost most basic you have to enable. And then as bot management comes into picture, you, have, you enable bot management as a basic feature uh, as part of ADC Premium. Now, one, one clarification is you don't need to turn on web application firewall to use bot management or vice versa. So you can decide to say, I'm going to first take care of my bot management problem and see what's going on on my website and then turn on web application firewall. So you can do either way. But most customers, you know, today we have web application firewall, so most customers will go and turn on the basic uh, web application firewall and then graduate into more advanced use cases. So that's, uh, that's great. I just want to make sure I understand um, kind of where you were going with that. So I can turn on the application firewall and through ADM watch the traffic that's, that's coming through it to know where the security issues are before maybe going back and setting policies. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So you can set policies that you say, you know, I'm just going to watch and log and not really take action. Right? Okay. Or you can take action of redirect or drop or whatever other things based on what you observe later on for your applications. Since we're going to be filtering up what's yeah. the, the major danger items coming through or traffic coming from, I can actually set it more intelligently. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. absolutely. Yep. Okay. All right. So that's, that's all. Thank you. So we do have a couple of recommended sessions. So um, please, if you haven't seen SIN 121, um, what's going on in, in networking at Citrix, I, I highly suggest that. Um, we also have 237, um, which goes into ADM um, in more detail about how you can manage all those different um, deployments as well as um, have the security side. And um, one, uh, 222, where they're actually going to go into how to troubleshoot common problems um, with your networking and, and your applications. Um, and please, um, there's one more. Can you go one more? Um, we would love to get your feedback. Hopefully, you learned a lot. Uh, Darshant is a, a wealth of information about security. Um, so please um, give us your feedback. We'd love to hear it um, so that we can fine tune for our next presentations next year. So thank you guys so much for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, we're going to be here for a few more minutes. So thank you. Thank you.